Hey everybody, what's going on? Glad you're here. Let's see here, who do we got? We got Martin, Prodigal Galian, Echo 26, JD, Gadalorian. What's up everybody on the YouTube? I am having trouble for some reason getting my rumble to load again. I don't know why. Oh my gosh. Okay, so of course I forgot to get the text message ready. Uh, so we're all gonna do this together. It's a it's, it's a project, folks. Okay, chat. If you're if you're in the chat, you gotta help me write the text message. We've got 30 seconds. Uh, what should I put for the Canary Cry dot support part of the text message? What will let people know that they can support the show? Uh, you've got a few more seconds until I just scramble something out here. Uh, let's see. I, there's always the classic V4V is the way to be. Uh-huh. That's almost never works. Nobody responds to that, but I don't know what else to do. Here we go. This is why the V4V model is failing, folks, because I cannot figure out. We've got something for Gons is saying lizards. Okay, I'll just put lizards on there. Quote Gons. Hold on. Here we go. Lizards. Lizarks. Don't know why that's spelled out. Okay. Lizards. Exclamation mark. Hyphen. Gons. That's just about as much as we had space for. Oh, down to the single thing. All right, folks. We're going to get this show going. Um,. We have a prayer. We have a prayer that is ready to be played. We're going to play that in just a second. Just a reminder, we, uh, it's up to you, dear producers, to go to CanaryCryNewsTalk.com. CanaryCryNewsTalk.com. Look for the green tab on the bottom of the right-hand side. Click on that. You can leave us a 90-second prayer that we'll be starting out the show with. Uh, go. Le we need more. We need an infinite amount of these prayers. So if you've done it once, don't think that you're done. It's up to all the producers out there. This is a great way to get involved uh, with the show, to fill a need that the show has, uh, and to bless uh, your other producers, your other listeners there. CanaryCryNewsTalk.com. Look for the green tab. Click on that. Leave a 90-second prayer for it before the show, kind of like this producer did right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for the community and the camaraderie you have allowed us to experience, not only through the Canarium, but throughout all the world. Please, Lord, equip us so that we may properly execute your will. Help us to shine the light throughout all the world. Please, Lord, guide us to the places we need to be. Guide us with the words we need to say, and help us to comfort those who need to be comforted. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The world is getting crazier. People are acting more and more insane. The end of the world is tomorrow. 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 See, there's only one thing to do when the world is falling apart. Listen to Basil and Gons as they discuss this week's news and events through the lens of Bible prophecy. You are listening to Canary Cry News Talk. You're listening to Canary Cry News Talk. Today is July 7th, 2023. We are live to tape on episode 643. And today, Plain Reptilian Marbles. Signing on from off the grid, Razzle Dazzle. I'm your best buddy, Basil. And my name is Gons, director of the Age of Deceit Films, your favorite Asian provocateur for Christ. Live to tape from California. To bring you the best news, which is the gospel message of Jesus Christ, while reporting the egregious with a well-rounded, biblically grounded take on world events and today's emergent phenomena, soul crafting. 
Oh, soul crafting. Shivers, Gons. Shivers. Maybe another way of saying psychological operation. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's a really good. It's like a spiritological operation, Psycho-spiritual which is spiritual uh, manipulation. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. right. Speaking of spiritual manipulation, let's go ahead and give that disclaimer for YouTube. <laughs> It's time for a disclaimer. Now listen up, YouTube. That's right. And just for all the content moderators and censorship managers out there, be they robots or humans, everything you hear on this show comes directly from the mainstream corporate news media. We do not claim to be experts on healthcare, geopolitics, military strategy, corporate law, or the moral and ethical implications of any of these topics, nor do we implicitly or explicitly support or subscribe to any sources or narratives containing misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation, as defined by other departments of Homeland Security. We're good boys. All right, YouTube, we're good, good boys. Mm-hmm. Let me give you a rundown. Oh, no, here's Basil. Let me bring you up to speed. Well, you know it, folks. There are reptilians on planes, and it is taking over the minds and the narrative across the Internet. What does this mean? Why suddenly... Do people care about reptilians on planes? We'll be exploring the phenomenon that's taken over Twitter and the rest of the internet the past couple days. And then, of course, a little catch up on sewer surveillance, our patented conspiracy theory regarding your toilet and Bill Gates. Uh, then Flippy, he's uh, he's big, he's small, and he's taken all of our jobs, including lab workers. Uh, counting worms. Yeah, very important update in the robotic arm space. Watch the space. We've got a couple of updates in regards to our favorite big pharma companies and some recent business moves uh, into the technocratic uh, future. Your DNA is at stake, folks. Watch out. And then keeping up with the WEF. That's a, that's another great name for like a, uh, a, a sitcom. Keeping up with the WEF. Doo, doo, doo. His name is Klaus, and he's a guy, and he want to take your family away and put them in the safe cities. And then at the end of the show, we've got an update on Antarctica uh, that I think really seals the deal on a lot of our uh, more broad scope theories about Antarctica's placement as uh, the utopia for rich white liberals and why you should move there and leave your family behind. Uh, But first, Guns, our lead story. PSYOPs. I have had it with these snakes on this plane. We're going to try to find a way around this. (laughs) Look at that. Oh, Guns, we put a little production work in here, huh? Well, had to throw in a jingle because we need a jingle for airplanes and snakes and reptilians. and and Yeah, and surely this is going to start happening more and more. So this is a jingle that's going to get a lot of use. Yeah, we've seen a lot of airplane meltdowns, uh, you know, people yelling, people fighting over politics, a MAGA hat or a mask or all kinds of stuff. But it's like a little micro cop. Yeah, it's. It, but it, it seems like uh, anguish. Oh, ooh, you cut out bad. I did not hear you talking. Mm, don't worry about it. Okay. Well, I was going to say that uh, as the the trust in our institutions start continues to de- to decline, I feel that the skepticism of the public, uh, the void is being filled with theories that were once only the fringiest people, you know, talking about. Uh, So I'm sure people know about this already, but let's do our own little analysis. This is the clip. I think it was like a 28 second clip. This one here is 26 seconds of a woman. She is very visibly distraught. uh, A lot of profanity. I think it's bleeped out here. So, you know, uh, earmuffs will not be necessary, although you you should talk to your children about what's going on here. But she is very frantically uh, walking towards the front of the plane and here is what she says. I'm telling you, I'm getting the f- off. And there's a reason why I'm getting the f- off. And everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two f- But I am telling you right now, that mother f- That mother f- back there is not real. And you can sit on this 
explain, then you can f die with them or not. I'm not going to. Bye. <laughs> I like the guy. At Lots the end. of beeps. Bye. Lots of beeps. Yeah, Lots yeah, of beeps. Lots of beeps. Yeah, yeah. You know, she is. She's definitely shaking. I'm sure everybody's seen the video so far, but yeah. uh, younger gal. I don't know, maybe late twenties, something like that. Uh, she's literally shaking. She's the the vocality. Of course, you can hear it in her voice. Uh, I mean, I believe. I believe that she experienced something. You oh, know, do you? you can't. Yeah, she can't. It's hard to say that that woman is faking how she feels. Mm. Or she's going to win an Academy Award next year and it'll all come to light. Yeah, uh, sure. <laughs> but yeah, so first of all, in the clip, you know, we talked about, the, we'll talk about the reptilian theory and all that, but she Did doesn't she mention. actually say no, reptilian? She, she doesn't didn't say she reptilian doesn't say at all. Anything about reptilian? Nothing. She just says that person back there isn't real or is not real or whatever. Yeah, that's all she says. And uh, so I think it's interesting to see that this clip, uh, depending on who you saw it from, and I'll tell you who I saw this, uh, at least be shared on Twitter from. It was this guy named Dom Lucre. Dom Lucre. Yeah, this guy, he he is a professional Twitterer. Mm -hmm. uh, he's yeah. actually the Dom Lucre breaker of narratives. Did you know that? He's breaking yeah. narratives around here. He's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. truth bombing, although he is in his bio here. It says that he's uh, I put homeless, uh, homeless in homes. That's nice. Um, he's a vet. He's former hip hop exec uh, spaces host, and he's one of the 40 under 40. So, yeah, there you go. And here's 40 under 40 for what? I don't know. It doesn't say. Usually it's like a Forbes thing, isn't it? Yeah. You're like Forbes, chosen if you're uh, one of those. Right. Yeah. But okay, here, here's his tweet. Fire emoji. Emergency emoji. Just in. A passenger of this viral video is stating that this female believes she was sitting next to some sort of reptilian man in a green hoodie on this plane. A male passenger that was sitting three rows behind the incident claims that the man in the green hoodie winked at him horizontally after this ordeal, which I think mm -hmm. means like the eyeball or the, the eyes. Yeah, verdict. He meant vertically. Vert right, vertically. Yeah. If someone can contact them, I would love to interview the man in the green hoodie. <laughs> he wants to interview the reptilian. Uh, or this woman on a Twitter spaces to debunk this outrageous accusation. Uh, debunk. debunk. Yeah, get the get the woman making the accusation so you can debunk the accusation. Yeah. Uh, how do you debunk someone out of saying that they saw what they saw? I don't know. There's some breakdowns of the video where they slow it down. They show the guy she's talking about. There's just a few frames. He is kind of a weird looking guy, but you know what these and he's wearing a green shirt with a hoodie which look who knows maybe she ha is afraid of flying she took some psilocybin to help cure her a little PTSD. Micro dosing a, a lot of micro dose going on today micro dose so. on the plane yep. i could see with a little micro dose on the plane which you know whoopsie daisies maybe it was a mi macro dose he does have sort of a lizard like feel about him mostly because he's wearing a kermit colored sweatshirt with the hood up um, and then in the slow-mo versions of the video, you know, there's always the issue of grainy, blurry footage yeah. slowed down, making people's, you know, the making uh, the details hard to pick out, especially on people's yeah. eyes and faces mm -hmm. where, you know, somebody's pupils aren't exactly circular or whatever. And so that's evidence that there's some sort of lizard person. I don't know. Maybe he is a lizard person. Well, uh, I got accused the, of that one time. Somebody made a video yes, of my yeah. talking on camera like this, and they were like, look at his eyes. Look at how they, they crumple. Yeah. And it was like, oh, yeah, the pixelation of my eyes is definitely yeah. uh, proof mm -hmm. that I'm a lizard man. That's um, why I wear the VR headset with the googly eyes so nobody can see my lizard eyeballs. Uh, I. You know, at, over in reptilian school, I never passed shape shifting class. So, mm. Mm. yeah, that that'll be a twist if you're the reptilian. Yeah. Um, so, part of this also, just as the social media phenomenon that this is, uh, I I think it's worth mentioning that on TikTok, there's this thing that and I'm sure you've seen this Basil, where people act out, they do skits, 
surrounding a viral story. So there's mm-hmm. a guy that came out, and, and I think this Dom Lucre guy, what he's basing some of his tweet on is some guy that said he was in the plane, he saw the whole incident, and blah, blah, blah. And he's the one that said that he thought, you know, in memory, he's like, I think the guy winked at me. You know, his eyes were blinking sideways like a rep- reptile or whatever. Mm-hmm. so and a lot of those accounts are pretty open about hey these are skits and it's like a whole phenomenon but it's weird because yeah. on tiktok you can read their description or whatever on twitter it just gets shared as like oh look at another witness on the plane and uh, th- there was one person who shared oh this is the reptilian man it's debunked now and it was some guy with tattoo and he's, tattoos and he was like yeah it said i was a freemason and uh, showed him my Freemason, showed her my Freemason tattoos. She started getting, you know, she started freaking out. And it was like, are we really falling for this? This is ridiculous. You know, yeah, it is interesting. There's a little bit of a generational gap going on here in how uh, y- the use of social media uh, you know, it sort of manifests between generations. Because a good example of this is the uh, Grimace milkshake phenomenon on mm. TikTok. Have you seen this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of this new way of doing uh, uh, social media where you participate in like a meme storyline. Like it's a it's a mass LARPing live action role play where you specifically on your social media post content to propagate a fake story and your you know, experience of it. And altogether, you know, people who are participating in in this social media sort of fad or trend or whatever, uh, they know it's fake. But the whole idea is you make it as real as possible. You participate. A lot of it has to do with, um, you know, public displays of LARPing and narrative. And I think this is really interesting uh, you know, it makes me feel kind of old, Gons, because because <laughs> you for missed us, the, that train. Yeah, yeah, and you're, you, yeah it's us, almost like Hollywood became uh, everyone's acting now. It's just exactly. part of the so, fabric of social media. So our idea of social media and just the internet as a whole is like, let's find truth. Let's, let's find truth. Let's, let's find real out, people. Let's debunk the wrong <laughs> stories. Let's find truth. Let's, uh, you know, express truth whenever we can. And that's how we get our value out of social media. Well, there's a generation below us, guns, where just because of their age, they missed out on a lot of the inception of social media and the importance of, like, true stuff. And it's all fake and participating in these broad meta narratives like there's lizard people on planes is just kind of a fun way to spend your time and to, and to like uh, post y- your experience with seeing a lizard person on a plane. I'm not saying that this what the, it, this is what this is exactly, but it matches up with a lot of versions of that. Yeah. And, you know, the younger generation, they don't, it doesn't even occur to them that somebody might take it seriously, or if they do, that's their fault. You know, you should be able to know that the the difference between, uh, you know, a a mimetic narrative LARPing session and uh, and something that's real or important or whatever. It, it's this really brilliant expression of nihilism from Gen Z that has sort of very subtly been missed by the older generations. <laughs> Well, it seems perfect. It seems like a perfect cover for me for the actual shape-shifting reptilians to be back there going, good, good. You know, now we can uh-huh. arrive and they will all think it's just a joke. So yeah. um, part of this, the reporting of this, I, I thought was interesting. So the Daily Dot had it early and they were just like, the woman who clearly seemed drunk and, you know, went with that whole narrative. Uh, uh-huh. But Yahoo mirrored a Your Tango article. Great. Uh, it's titled "People Are Searching for Woman Who Has Meltdown and Gets Off Plane After Claiming to See a Man Who Was Not Real." Hmm. And uh, of course, it talks about the video here: video showing passenger having meltdown on a plane. Uh, are a dime a dozen these days, but the most recent meltdown to go mega viral has a startling and bizarre twist. The video shows a woman frantically trying to get off the plane. Yada yada yada. We know about that. Part of what makes TikTok 
the TikTok video so bizarre is the woman appears to be perfectly normal. She's well-dressed, speaking clearly, and doesn't seem to fit any of the stereotypes that would normally make this kind of video so easy to dismiss. Oh my gosh, there's so much of that <laughs> breaking down. It's such, there's a tweeter, tweeter after tweeter after article after article talking about why do we believe this woman? She doesn't look crazy. She looks very right. well put together. She does seem genuinely right. frightened. She, I mean, you got to give it to her. She's a brilliant actress if she d isn't really feeling this way. I have a feeling she's on drugs, but you know, what are you going to do? Mm. Uh, but There's some theories presented in this article that we'll get to. So okay, we'll get tell to. me. Tell and me. the intensity no, and uh, obviously fear with which she speaks makes one thing clear. Whatever it is she thinks she saw, it was very real to her. And it goes through the whole thing here, uh, visibly upset. Da, 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 da. Uh, come on, page load. Um, here we go. Some witnesses have reported that the woman was intoxicated at the time of her meltdown. Uh, intoxication, of course, is the first thing most of us would assume when hearing news of a video in which a woman on the, has a plane meltdown because she seems to have seen some sort of apparition on a plane. Um, and according to the woman who says she heard from someone who witnessed the incident, alcohol definitely played a role. So there you go. There's the alcohol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. So I don't buy the alcohol excuse. Uh, but... Well, it's part of the, the, the gr grander theory here that they'll present in this article. So okay. just hold your horses there. Uh, things got so out of hand, quote, they have to turn the whole plane around, Rose went on to say, yada, yada, yada. Now, this is the part, right? Because I was thinking, ah, this is, you know, whatever. This might just be a woman freaking out. She's on drugs, whatever. But then this factoid came out. Comedian Carrot Top also happened to be yes. on the flight, which was scheduled to fly into Orlando, Florida. Quote, this lady lost her marbles, Carrot Top wrote on Facebook, congratulating American Airlines for how they handled the situation. Quote, it's really maddening how one nut job can ruin everyone's plan, he wrote, noting that the flight eventually made it safely to its destination. So, yeah, know, that was a weird part of it. Anytime you have a... A dying uh, prop comedian, not dying, not dying, <laughs> not a dying. career, yeah. career He's uh, from another of, age. Uh, yeah, yes, a, kind a, of a career a, entertainer, a career entertainer it. that whose uh, career is not in the uh, uh, I guess you can call it his twilight not years. He's wants. in his twilight years. You know? <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please. Carrot Top would have something to say about that. But <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure He's you get ripped, the point, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just interesting to have somebody like him in there uh, just to make the whole thing seem even more ridiculous. Okay. But here's uh -huh. more, but others have theorized that the woman has some sort of psychic powers and actually genuinely saw something, saw something. Not everyone believes uh -huh. what happened is so simple as Shania Rose reports. However, TikToker and medium at Kelly, the magical medium posits <laughs> is she LARPing too? Maybe that the woman yeah. might have psychic abilities and may have seen quote, Something in the back of the plane that no one else can see. Kelly says she genuinely believes, quote, she did see something and theorizes that the alcohol the woman is known to have drank might have heightened her awareness. Quote, when you drink, yeah. it's called spirits, she said. Quote, mm. therefore, when you drink, you are more susceptible to seeing apparitions of spirit. End quote. Mm, a phenomenon yeah. Kelly says she herself has experienced while drinking at events like weddings. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's what makes this particular, I mean, the, 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 the power with which this clip has fully overtaken the conversation is incredibly suspicious in a lot of ways. And it could be because there's we've reached some sort of critical mass of, uh, you know, interest in lizard people, uh, as well as public displays of, uh, you know, I don't know, outbursts. It could be because a majority or a large portion of the people who are responsible for this clip getting so much attention are playing along in the LARP. But it also says a lot about everything that we see on the internet or not even just on the internet in any sort of mass media at all. I mean, you're talking about the theater of worldview 
That's the point we've been trying to get across for a decade now yeah. about mass media is it's similar to whatever the news is playing or whatever the collection of corporate news is trying to push the conversations towards. Uh, so many of them are their own version of LARP. I mean, you talk about the uh, literally anything. I don't need to pick out any one topic. <laughs> we don't, we don't I mean, need to do a full expose. Yeah, you get it. Yeah, I think, literally I think anything that they talk about could be, could very well be a LARP by elite corporate news people, executives, and there would be no way for us of knowing. And it's well, it's it's kind of it's almost enlightened in a way of the Gen Z generation to realize this, whether it's conscious or not, but then start playing in that space in their on you know on their own. Uh, it's it's enlightened in a way, but it also is serving. I would say the uh, the purposes of the crafters of narrative to take all credibility away from any uh, narrative well, being pushed on the internet. It's it's taking credibility away, but also they get to pick and choose because there are there's so many people doing it. They can just pick whoever, like this psychic lady, medium, magical right. medium lady. Who, who mm-hmm. is, I, well, I don't know who she is, you know, but she must be okay on TikTok or whatever. And they can just pick up her narrative and present it in some kind of article. So yeah, just, there's a narrative to serve anybody to serve who anybody wants to and any, anything to they address want to do. it. So Kelly went on to say she believes that the woman's what the woman saw was quote dark energy. So her mm-hmm. fear is understandable. Quote, I'd have to obviously speak to her to see exactly what she saw. Kelly says, but warns that quote we live amongst these creatures every single day. So I want to confirm, yes, she did see something, and it was not of this world. <laughs> she's confirming that she saw something, even though she's like, I'd rather, you know, I'd like to talk to her about it. Um, other passengers, and this is where they talk about the reptilian eye blinking sideways, uh, and then another passenger saying that they saw the exchange and that the guy in the hoodie didn't say anything. You know, he didn't mm-hmm. speak to her. Quote, telepathic conversation, wrote one person in the comments regarding their alleged exchange. Quote, she didn't realize it until later. Hoodie guy knew the whole time. <laughs> Again, just picking up quotes from some random social media, but just comment on the thread and like making it part of the, the narrative in the mainstream. People are wanting to hear from the woman's point of view. Given that the woman is likely in legal trouble over the incident, we're probably oh. not likely to ever see or hear her side of things. Mm. Really? Ever? Until then, keep an eye peeled for malevolent spirits on planes and maybe lay off the booze just in case. Well, that would be advice that we would give in general. So yeah, that's yeah. good advice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, well, it's, I guess we got to say it. If anybody out there knows this lady, get her in contact. It's about time we put out another t- interview on CCR. So uh, <laughs> if we could, for once in our lives... Uh, connect with some sort of phenomenon of the zeitgeist like that, uh, that uh, could help us out. So there you go. All right, lizard lady. Mm -hmm. Uh, Anything else on that? No, but we can just continue to uh, pat ourselves on the back for our our great prediction about sewer surveillance. We'll control them with toileting. Toilets! Toilets! Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, you want me to bring this one? Sure, I could do it. doesn't matter. Yeah, this is coming from uh, news-medical.net. Sounds legit. The headline, <laughs> wastewater monitoring can be an effective tool for global disease surveillance. Yes, we know this. Wastewater monitoring could act as an early warning system to help countries better prepare for future pandemics, according to a new study. Oh, good. We have a new study. New study, uh, yeah. Uh, Confirming we always- what we were ranting about three years ago. We need a new study. An international collaboration involving Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Yep. The is, Ro- that, Rock- that, that. <laughs> oh, there's more. I know. The Rockefeller Foundation. Hey, there they are. Mathematica and the United Kingdom's Health Security Agency has shed light on how different countries monitor wastewater during infectious diseases outbreaks and where improvements could be made. We must improve the wastewater surveillance. 
uh, the toilet surveillance for the study samples from treatment plants, rivers, wetlands, and open drains were reported from 43 nations spanning six continents during 2022. Murdoch Children's and University of Melbourne professor Julie Bynes, who worked with colleagues from Universitas Gajamada in Yogyakarta, said the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the need for robust and resilient disease surveillance systems. The ongoing COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, Gans. Ongoing oh my pandemic. gosh. And We're we need... still in the ongoing pandemic, so we need to keep surveilling the wastewater. Well, I, th I think maybe if they're looking at the wastewater, it does look like the pandemic is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, because where's all the COVID now? Well, it's in the sewer. Yep. Uh, quote, despite decades of funding being directed into global infectious disease surveillance and warning signs that came from both traditional and non-traditional data sources, much of the world was caught off guard by the rapid spread of SARS-CoV-2, she said. Please, quote, the pandemic could potentially have unfolded differently if there had been a dedicated surveillance system that was on constant alert, transmitting information <laughs> about pathogens circulating in the environment across the globe. With such a system in place, experts may have identified SARS-CoV-2 far more quickly. Chinese the toilet! There's SARS-CoV-2 mm -hmm. in a Wuhan lab and in a it, Chinese toilet! Exactly. If the pen, <laughs> Even if we should at least be taking a look at the uh, sewer surveillance directly around <laughs> U.S. U.S. funded uh, bioweapons labs yeah, in that's China. A good, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's somebody really, should do that. What company? We should come up it's with about that. about targeting. It's about targeting guns. We'll make a shell company that does sewer surveillance, and then we can go into all the hot places. And yeah, sure. Why not? Even if the pandemic spread was inevitable, healthcare systems could have better prepared for the fallout with more advanced notice, saving many lives. Yeah. Uh, so, so you get the point there. But we are beefing up. This is now we're going global with the uh, importance of the sewer surveillance it's not it's not just about you know uh, we can surveil the sewer water of neighborhoods in the US it's uh, the words used in their own uh, uh, study here is uh, where is it oh no constant alert yeah, constant dedicated alert. surveillance systems on constant alert, 24-7 <laughs> surveillance of all human waste around the globe is the goal here. And if that is not at least a beautiful metaphor for the World Economic Forum's uh, <laughs> plan for the world, I don't know what is. I really and hope that the, the branch, the, the, the governing body that they mm -hmm. create for this is Poo Watch, the PW. Poo Watchers. Poo, <laughs> Poo Watchers. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, well, and you know it will be. So there you go, folks. Keep well, an eye out for uh, people snooping around in your sewers. I do want to mention, because I, I just wanted to double check, because they list some pretty big heavy hitters at the top here. The International Collaboration, Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Yes, it is a uh, an institution named after Rupert Murdoch. So it is yes, the Rupert it Murdoch. Is Yes, and connected. Yeah. You know, I will say that is one of the fun parts about uh, being off the grid and on a septic system here. Mm. All my waste is my own. Until, no, no man can come test my waste. Uh, until you get a knock on the door from Klaus, and he, mm -hmm. he, want, he just wants to have coffee. You know what? He can pay me. coffee with, with me. I will show you the secrets he, of the cyber, For the right cyber price. Pandemic. For the right price, I will let Klaus come uh, clean my septic tank for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just an offer I'm putting out there. Uh, the negotiations are open. Mm. I have previously put my, my uh, you know, my desired salary or desired uh, sellout at $10 million. So if it's worth $10 million, you can have my many years of septic tank uh, inhabitants. Okay. And with that, Guns, we got to remember it's Friday. Do it's not Friday. Day, 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 keep playing with the Friday thing. We're going to learn today. Because it's Friday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got shit. Toilets! Are you not entertained? Toilets! It's Friday. It's Friday. Whoa. 
There what? you go. It is Friday, that? folks. I don't know. There's, there's a glitch. There's... The reptilian glitch. <laughs> that that jingle winked at me vertically. Um, <laughs> so let's see here. It is Friday. This is wonderful. Uh, any big plans for the weekend? Anything anything notable to report there, Gonzo? Not really. I, I did want to. I know you're a big movie buff. So I wanted to ask mm-hmm. you if you are had seen or plan to see Sound of Freedom. You know, I have no plans to see it. Uh, I've been excited to see how popular the film has been. There's been, you know, since it came out, uh, there's been lots of hubbub about it, considering I had not heard a single peep about it uh, before it actually came out. It took out Indiana Jones or something, right, over the weekend at the box office. But this is how The Guardian is reporting on the the take, the, the whole success of Sound of Freedom over the weekend. Or the last weekend. Headline, Sound of Freedom, the QAnon adjacent thriller seducing America. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That's the craziest thing, man. (laughs) Any mention of this horrible crime that is happening around the world. The FBI themselves admit that it's happening. Yeah. Uh, But any mention of it just immediately turns on the, the crazy radar. It's really crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why. They have to do this, but anyway, no, mm. there, there was there was not uh, anything exciting or important going on, other than some family mm-hmm. time, probably a little more unpacking, you know, that kind of thing. Great, um, I'm seeing in the chat here uh, for the live. It looks like you could give your your own volume a little bit of a boost. Mm. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's a big weekend for me. Uh, mommy and Daddy Basil are visiting the uh, the compound. Mm. Uh, they'll be showing up actually later today, so that'll be fun. That's On the why show? Going to keep this. Sh- they might show up during <laughs> the show. Probably not beyond the show, but if we hear the rumblings uh, of somebody pulling in the front driveway, uh, that will probably be them. So we are uh, just going to keep moving forward just in the case that uh, my emus break out and decide to attack any intruders. Remember, they are highly trained security emus and uh, I need to be able to give their signal whistle uh, to not dismember my parents when they show up. So that'll be fun. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> and other than that, why don't we uh, thank some executive producers? Executive producers. Yep, we're on the value for value model, folks. Uh, if you get value from the show, put value back in. It's the only way that we survive. You can do this uh, with your time, your talent, or your treasure. Lots of ways to put value back in. Just know that uh, if you get value, pray about it, think about it, uh, consider putting value back in. Uh, whether that's with your talent, if you're an artist, your time, or with your treasure. And uh, executive producers are people who come in uh, extra generous for any individual episode. They are then forever known as the executive producer of that episode. They can put it on their LinkedIn, put it on their Twitter bio. If anybody asks about it, give them our email. We will confirm that for you. Uh, and you know, the, it continues to slow down. The value for value model continues to test our, our will. Uh, but I do want to thank executive producer Felicia D. Felicia D. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. There was no, uh, executive producer when I put the email out. Felicia D who I believe might literally be an angel from heaven, uh, coming in, saving the day again. Uh, going a long way to helping pay for the uh, the babysitter for today's mm-hmm. episode. We appreciate that very much, Felicia D. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, and oh, wait, that's wait, it. Wait, uh, yeah. oh, Where'd you find this? There we go. Mm-hmm. I want to take a second, Gans, and show off the thumbnail for the Canary Cry uh, T-shirt council. The boats are in. That's right. You've heard of reptilians on a plane. Well, we have uh, the most important collection of secret society members in the world on the Canary Cry T-Shirt Council. Go to CanaryCryTShirtCouncil.com. And uh, the votes are in. The design has been decided for the next Canary Cry uh, News Talk T-Shirt. And it is 
brilliant. And uh, today we have a design from the Mr. Uh, Sir Darren Knight of the Hungry Pandas. We had a selection of Sir Darren uh, designs for this quarter. And we uh, landed, or the council landed on the uh, the Canary Cry News Talk movie poster, sort of uh, all-seeing eye montage uh, design that we've had, uh, you know, it's been floating around. I've shared it a couple times, uh, but putting that on a shirt with uh, the sort of vector wave Canary Cry News Talk uh, on a black shirt. It is simply beautiful. It's, it's I can't wait for this one to go out. Uh, so there you go. Thank you very much to T-shirt council members. This shirt is so cool. In fact, uh, I'm probably going to have a couple extra copies sent to myself. And it's really a shame. I really want to get this out to as many people as possible because it might be the coolest shirt any podcast has ever created. Uh, and of course, it's all thanks to the Canary Cry T-Shirt Council. Uh, so we're currently speaking with trusted advisors about different ways that uh, this shirt can be accessed by the general public. Um, but if that's something anybody is interested in, send us an email at canarycryradio at gmail.com. If you like the look of this sucker and you're interested in getting in on it, uh, receiving it, let us know. Because uh, we want to figure something out that gets as many people into this shirt as possible while still maintaining the integrity of the Canary Cry T-Shirt Council concept. Uh, so there you go. I'm very proud of all the T-Shirt Councilors. Thank you guys very much. It is indeed a collection of the most important people in the world. Bear, 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 bear. Uh, let's let's will you um I'll, I'll do it i'll stick our uh email address into the chat just in case anybody wants to email us uh, just let us know if there's enough people who are interested in receiving this we will figure out a way uh to make it work so thank you very much cool are you ready for okay is it flippy on. update time it is flippy update time okay Flippy update. Do you want fries with that? Yeah, that's right, folks. It's time for the Flippy update. Flippy is our colloquial name for the disembodied robot arms that are taking our jobs, enslaving our children, and flirting with our spouses. Uh, we use talking about Flippy as a way to explore all the new, fun, and exciting ways robots are taking over the world and how there's nothing we can do about it. Today's Flippy update is coming from the very official outlet of EurekaAlert.org. From the AAAS, Advanced Something or Other, Something, Something, Something. The headline, excuse me, the headline is, A Robot That Performs Genetic Manipulations of the Roundworm C. Elegans. All right, Gans, watch out, Roundworm C. Elegans. The robots are coming for your genes. And I believe this is uh, simply the first step into the robots improving humanity of course for the technocratic dystopia that uh, we are all headed for a robotic system capable of imaging and transferring the model organism cyanorhabditis elegans could replace hours of tedious lab work according to a recent study Laboratory workers spend untold hours every year manipulating C. elegans, a tiny nematode worm used in genetics research that reproduces quickly and is optically transparent. Often, the labor required to manage and manipulate the animals is a major bottleneck for using the worms to address questions in biology. Fang Yang, Zhao, Li, Anthony, Fode, and colleagues developed Worm Picker, a robotic system capable of handling routine tasks. There's a new challenger in the ring, Gons, and it's Worm Picker, uh, increasing the productivity of human researchers. Of course, not to replace uh, not, them. Not just... the robot researchers. Uh, the oh, no, human no. No, no. This... Okay. We are increasing the productivity of these measly human researchers with robots. Worm Picker's imaging system autonomously detects nematode age, sex, shape, expression of fluorescent reporters, and other phenotypes. A robot arm 
holding a wire loop can pluck selected individuals out of a petri dish and transfer the animals to another dish electrically sterilizing itself with heat between each transfer the authors put the robot through several standard tasks including genetic crossing genetic mapping and genomic integration of the, a trans gene so it's not just a robot that can pick up worms guns all no. right I know what you might be thinking. You might be thinking, oh, I get it, worm picker. They just got a robotic arm that can pick up worms. What will they think of next? No, this uh, robotic arm with all of its uh, AI-infused uh, consciousness is able to uh, do tasks such as genetic crossing, genetic mapping, and genomic integration of the trans gene. The authors show that the robot performs a fluorescent C. elegans sorting task at a rate comparable to that of human researchers. The authors expect the robotic system to accelerate studies in diverse areas of C. elegans biology to make worm picker as accessible as possible. The authors are providing a list of components and have made all the design files and systems software freely available online. We can make our own worm picker guns. Exit strategy right there. There we go. We, we can, can start genetically a... engineer our worm acorns. Worm picker, yes. Wor this is, yes. For those who have been around <laughs> the show for long enough, yeah. this is a, a sort of cataclysmic uh, collision of some of our favorite topics of course one of them being robotic arms taking our jobs uh, enslaving our children and flirting with our spouses and picking our worms uh, including wormicorns which live on the moon uh, which have been uh, one of our most important <laughs> breakthroughs in this show uh, over our decade of research uh, yep yeah, we got flippy flippies on the wormicorn train and not only that but is getting put to work in uh, genetically modifying them, Gons. This truly is the beginning of the end. Oh, well, especially trans genes. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Just straight up. Huh? Yeah. Trans genes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so we got we're, the trans genes. Uh, we got transgenders, but also at the genetic level, we have trans genes. Tr so it's... Transgenders. Tra yeah. <laughs> transgenders. It all starts with the worms. We're, we're going to get, we're gonna get banned. We're gonna get a little genetic... Uh, activists it's um, science folks this is why now sorry i mean there is a long-standing narrative about the scientific community i mean we, we've learned a lot about the scientific community over the past few years but part of this is uh the overabundance of scientists and how these people who have spent decades in school uh, then go on to work for basically minimum wage in these laboratories yeah uh, just kind of handling worms, uh, which is kind of part of putting in your dues to becoming, a, I don't know, a, a big boy, big girl scientist. Uh, but I don't know. It's Again, the robots are creating a vacuum in the areas of employment that allow you to get the experience that lets you grow into a big, strong scientist. You know, how are you supposed to get a... Uh, a job as a scientist if they want you to have worm picking experience but at the same time they're not hiring worm pickers because they got robots doing it they got a worm picker doing it for them exactly. i think i think you you can propose a bill like basil rosewater propose a bill. Mm -hmm. senator basil rosewater senator basil rosewater some kind of uh human presence in all robot factories bill or act where it's it's by law we must have a human in the vicinity of of robots producing anything you know with how quickly this is happening my my uh you know our our long standing theory about vr and keeping the human population working until their dying breath on their deathbed using vr controlling robots at this point it's like the more humane option <laughs> to hire someone in a vr helmet to at least you know, look through the eyes of the robot, give them something to do during the day uh, instead of being completely replaced. I would be a a humanist champion uh, saving jobs and keeping people employed. <laughs> 
by requiring VR uh, robo supervisors to oversee all this monitors. worm picking. Yeah, yeah like mo exactly. actual mon monitors who get to experience every robot act, you know, maybe mm -hmm. virtually, but at least you're watching. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the robot's experience becomes the human experience. More of a legal supervisor just to make sure that if something goes wrong, it's the robot that goes to jail and we're not <laughs> left in you know, some sort of uh, floating uh, abyssal space where robots uh, are both legally uh, considered more important than us and also uh, legally unliable for their deadly deeds in the lab. So there you go, folks. There's your flippy update for the day. A pandemic special. I want to die or be decapacitated. I want to be vaccinated. Vaccinated. This is a pandemic Vaccine. of the unvaccinated. Man, got a lot of jingles about vaccines. Mm hmm And uh, I think we're okay on YouTube here. This is from biopharmadive.com. Actually got a pair of articles here to check out what our good old friends, Pfizer and Moderna, are up to. We're going to start off with Pfizer here. Pfizer backs CRISPR biotech caribou in latest cell therapy investment. CRISPR. Nine. So we have another clash of some topics here that we've been covering for years. One being CRISPR and, of course, all this uh, Pfizer uh, <laughs> gene therapy. That they're yeah, they need their, their next big uh, product here. Right. Pfizer bought $25 million worth of stock in Caribou Biosciences, giving the gene editing company a vote of confidence and a boost of funding for an experimental multiple myeloma treatment the giant drug maker bought 4.69 million shares kind of a a degen number there at five dollars and 33 cents mm. a piece in a sale that closed june 30th after the stock had hovered around four dollars in recent trading days as part of pfizer's due diligence all right they're doing their due diligence, Basil, because, you know, they've Good. only been fined a few billion over their, their lifespan. Yeah, if there's, <laughs> there's one thing Pfizer's known for. It's their diligence. Their due diligence and keeping things legal. It had access to data that hasn't yet been made public, suggesting the work underway is promising, analysts say. Right. It's not public, so it's promising. Of course it is. You're trying to pump up the stock. Caribou shares jumped more than 60% close to $7 a piece in early trading Thursday. So Dang, why did nobody nobody from Pfizer gave us a warning here? Did did uh, Pelosi know this was going to happen? We got to we got to see. Why did yeah, we not? Maybe Fauci's get, allowed to get play the these now. Yeah. yeah, since he's not in, you know, official role anymore. The investment agreement directs Caribou to use the funds solely to advance CB-011, currently in phase one, testing for patients with relapsed or refractory multiple myeloma. As part of the investment, Pfizer gained a right of first negotiation if Caribou decides to engage in talks with potential partners for CB-011. So, hmm. uh, you know, and there's more details here that are not as important. And if you want to dig in, you can. All the links are there in the show notes at canarycrimenewstock.com. But there you go, Pfizer moving into CRISPR, which makes sense. It's the next step. All this gene editing stuff. That's two stories, Basil, in a row here where we have genetic editing as sort of the, a theme. One in the context of worms and robot arms and the other one in the context of one of the biggest pharma criminal conglomerates ever, Pfizer. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there you go. There's there's a, a, the direction we're headed very much what we all said it would be it's almost like not conspiratorial enough for this show anymore yeah it's just to, to be concerned knowledge. about the obvious march towards uh, ubiquitous gene editing uh, in healthcare yep well let's check out the other company moderna what are they up to because you know moderna didn't have a product for a decade and then covid and then all of a sudden mm -hmm. boom mrna jabs everywhere this is coming from Reuters. Moderna agrees deal 
in China. Chinese yours! With view to developing mRNA medicines. This is a really interesting article <laughs> because it's kind of funny. You know, you kind of do your damage in the U.S. and it's like, all right, where can we go next? Uh, who, who's who's going to let us um, gene edit their population? Mm-hmm. Uh, China. Mm-hmm. China would be the perfect place. And, of course, they're they're all into it. Shanghai vaccine maker Moderna Inc. said on Wednesday it had signed a memorandum of understanding and a land collaboration agreement. A land collaboration agreement. That might come into focus as we talk about the rest of the stuff here today. Uh, to work toward opportunities for it to research, develop, and manufacture mRNA medicines in China. Quote, any medicines produced under this agreement will be exclusively for the Chinese people and will not be exported, uh, exported, a spokesperson told Reuters in an email in response to a query. He declined to comment on the size of the deal and did not immediately provide any other details. Now, this, this just thing, there's a little quote here saying that, you know, any medication produced in the, under this agreement, it's only for the Chinese citizens, it's not to be exported, suggests to me that there is some kind of, like, racial genetic targeting type oh, of that stuff. Yeah. I know they've been doing that already, but just, you know, that more. was part of the thing, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So uh, continuing with that trend, it's, it's almost like, yeah, we're, we're doing something that targets specifically our Chinese citizens in some kind of uh, medicine. Chinese media outlet Yikai reported on Tuesday that Moderna was set to make its first investment in China. That could be worth around $1 billion. And that mm. chief executive officer, Stefan Bansel, was visiting Shanghai. Of course he was. Moderna said in May it was looking for opportunities in China after registering a legal entity in the world's second largest economy. The company prior to this had no presence in mainland China. It opened up uh, an office in Hong Kong last year as part of an Asia expansion. Its expansion into mainland China comes as its revenue growth slows sharply due to waning global demand for its COVID-19 vaccine, the U.S. company's only approved product. Moderna in February forecast a possible net loss for 2023, calling it a transition year before it starts to see sales from experimental vaccines for respiratory uh, syncytial, am I saying that right? Syncytial virus, RSV. I have no three. idea. It's RSV. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and it goes on. But you get it. This is yeah. exclusively for the Chinese people, and it's going to uh, uh, involve Moderna's mRNA technology. So, it, which is interesting because China didn't want any Western vaccines in their citizens prior well, so that's to this the, during the pandemic. Exactly. That's kind of the weird thing about it, isn't it? Because yeah. uh, they were kind of strictly not really. Medicines, uh, mRNA technology, their own vaccine didn't use the technology. And it was kind of a uh, kind of a sticking point uh, during that time. It is uh, interesting, kind of at the same time, there's a report coming from DailyMail.co.uk. Elon Musk signs on to letter pledging Tesla's commitment to China's core socialist values <laughs> to continue operations in the country. So uh, we see Elon Musk signing on to a letter to uphold the core socialist values in China to do business there. And I have a feeling that uh, Moderna had to make uh, a similar (laughs) Similar pledge. pledge, Well, same thing. It goes to show, you know, much like we saw in World War Two, you had companies like uh, Ford and Mm -hmm. IBM, IBM, you know, assist in the whole Nazi operation. You know, the, it's the, the military industrial complex, the, the medical industrial complex. It's all kind of the same thing here. And we're seeing proof of it now where, you know, Pfizer is kind of moving this way into CRISPR. Hey, let's move on. Moderna is like, hey, what do we do now? Oh, we go to China. Yeah, but did, did, isn't the whole COVID thing U.S. versus China? Yeah, but hey, they're going to let us experiment on their people. So let's let's go for it. Even, it's just a weird. Even out. Yeah, even outside of the COVID thing, just simply the building economic tensions. And, right, but the, you know, yeah, the, the geopolitical uh, it, tensions of, of current. It's a weird time. It's just a weird time to be putting so many of your chips 
onto the, you know, the China table there. Yeah. It makes me wonder if elites like Moderna executives or whoever and Elon, you know, kind of got a message like, hey, don't worry. Yeah, go go do more business in China if you need to. We're going to keep this uh, China <laughs> LARP going for we, a few more years. We got till 2027. So okay. We got four years. Just go ahead, you know, play around a little bit more. I mean, it makes me wonder if any of this uh, tension with China is real at all. If the elites aren't acting like it's uh, a big risk to go attach themselves to China, uh, what's well, the point? What, I, what's the point of being an elite if you uh, if you don't get the the message to either stay in a market or get out of a market before World War Three breaks out? Right. I, I I think it has to do with something else entirely. Mm -hmm. The whole China U.S. tensions is about something else. But um, let's move on because we got some other things to, okay. to talk about here, specifically the mention of land in that last article about Moderna in China um, connects to this here. Build back better. Build back better. Build back better. Blah, blah, blah. Build back better. We will build Babylon better. This time, a new world order. Going straight to the World Economic Forum website. They published an article Yay. on July 5th. It was headlined, Can We Build a People and Nature Positive Future with Systematic Land Use? Mm, yeah, that doesn't sound uh, sketchy at all. I'm going to read some of the bullet points here. Uh, Human exploitation of natural resources is often underestimated or overlooked. To combat this, <laughs> we need a systematic land use approach where we, re we, the World Economic Forum, reassess and reallocate land into productive, regulative, supporting, and cultural functions to synergize economic, social, and environmental goals. Ah, uh, yes. Wonderful. I don't even know what all that means, but it sounds like the same kind of hogwash we've been hearing from the elites for years now. I, 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 I the hubris of saying we're going to reassess and reallocate. Reallocate means like it's right. almost the same as like redistribute, right? So it's like telling you what you, like do, what you can do, what I mean, you can't had, do on uh, your land. You had Bill Gates uh, just buy up, you know, a bajillion acres of. American farmlands, not to mention the Chinese and their all, all their farmland holdings in the U.S. Are they the ones getting reallocated? Are we going to reallocate the land holdings of, oh, I don't know, Shell and Exxon Mobil, or is this for uh, the it's for individual? Their expansion. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. One. Exactly. We're so, reallocating it to Shell and Exxon right. Mobil away from uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Right. A third bullet point here with proper science, technology, financial tools, management, and the will to overhaul unsustainable development models, we can improve the health of our planet. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. I, I can't even believe that. You know, it's so blatant that it's, it's I, I know they've been blatant before, but I mean, hello, they're saying. Yeah, the, you know, these we need financial tools, we need the right science, we need the right tech, we need the right management, and the will to overhaul unsustainable development models, which means like anybody who's doing anything right normal. So, <laughs> you know, in the same not. way, in the same way that the World Economic Forum put out you'll own nothing and you'll be happy in 2016 right. when we first found it on the world economic forum not I'm not talking about during covid when everybody learned about world economic forum and everybody saw the video no 2016 on canary cry news talk we were breaking down the world economic forum and the uh, their plan for the future that was three or four years ahead of sort of the mass uh, the mass knowledge about this and it's because of the way that they present their ideas and the words that they choose similar to what we're reading right now which it's you know kind of sounds kind of uh, tree hugger either 
Yeah, it's it's either using the right words and implying that, you know, the system we live in needs to change. And if we change it the right way, we can fix the world. That's kind of the the general gist that they tend to come out with these ideas. But then, uh, you know, uh, you either read into the details immediately and it is literally saying we're going to take away the ability for individuals to own land and to uh, allocate that to, of course, corporations, but not just any corporations, corporations who have a high enough ESG score, which, by the way, Shell Oil Company has the highest the ESG highest score ESG. you can possibly have. Why? Not because they changed you know, the way they pollute our environment. They purchased land. And that's what you need to maintain your ESG score. It is literally a ratio of how many trees you own as a company versus how much pollutants you put into the environment. So as long as Shell owns 40 gajillion trees, because they purchased you know, the entire state of Ohio, uh, they can put as much pollution into the environment as they want. Now, I'm just using their own reasoning here. You know, there's a, there's a lot of different corporations and a lot of different uh, pollution-related details. That'll make this a different story for every company. But what they're saying here is we're going to run out of land in order for our – ESG companies to maintain good ESG scores. So we're going to need to uh, allocate land differently. Mm -hmm. We can't have individuals owning land because, uh, you know, we need that land for the ESG score of essential fossil fuel companies. So it's a beautiful uh, way. They're just sort of reinventing the math of uh, of what the new world order 2.0 looks like and and the hidden part of this is just presupposing that everyone's just going to follow along no one's going to rebel against any of this it's just the hubris behind it here's a little section rethinking how we use land with only one earth underfoot if we are to extend even by a little the anthropocene epoch we must uproot rethink redesign and reorganize the way we use the earth's surface this is what's called the systemic land use approach and it's a <laughs> they want to shift a paradigm shift in human society's development trajectory that's what they want uh, yeah paradigm a, a, shift. A one a wonderful detail, just a few uh, paragraphs down from where you got it here. 90% of land could become degraded by 2050. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have that sure. There. Just yeah. like throwing out a number. <laughs> just 90% of land could become <laughs> degraded by 2050. Stripping businesses, it says, of the very resources they rely on and backtracking advances in socioeconomic development. Mm -hmm. So they're talking about the land available to businesses and how that's going to backtrack advances in socioeconomic development, meaning, you know, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Compounded by the effects of land degradation on climate change and biodiversity, sustainable land use is essential to safeguard and future-proof businesses. Uh -huh. According to the World Economic Forum's Insight Report, seizing business opportunities. I love that they have a great name for this. Seizing business opportunities in China's transition towards a nature positive economy. Nature positive transitions in food and land use related sectors could create $502 billion of annual business value and 29 million jobs by 2030. So allocating land, giving it to businesses, will create $502 billion of annual business value and 29 million jobs by 2030. In, in so China. So this in whole China. experiment here of land, uh, what is it, sustainable land use or systematic land use, right. they're rolling out in China. 
Of course, because that's the only place they can right now, because it is their <laughs> petri dish for their uh, social credit score systems, their their surveillance states, their, their mRNA, too. ESG, their mRNA. So now we know it's what Moderna happening in China. Moderna jumped on this bandwagon, is what they did. They saw the opportunity yeah. here, and they're like, "Oh, this is where the money's flowing. Let's go." Because uh, and again, it mentioned the land, something about the land. It's in that last easy. Article. Yeah, and it's easy to sell. Because what you're selling is, we'll take land away from people and the government, and we'll give it to businesses, right. and it will create billions of dollars. Yes, you steal something from a person and give it to a bit uh, to a business. Of course, that's billions of dollars of business value. Notice how it's not uh, revenue; it's right. not market <laughs> share. It's business value, meaning they take the value away from the individual. They give it to the company and it increases business value it they're saying it all right there in the words uh all you got to do is read them and really read them uh moving forward it is imperative for businesses to reassess the impacts of their operations on land in relation to biodiversity climate freshwater ocean and adopt science-based targets for nature so it's all in the beautiful language of saving the planet that's why you got to give up you got to give up all your uh, ownership rights to your you know whatever whatever land you got as if as if any of us like can actually own any significant land anymore yeah but uh it's probably well, it's probably for the best guns because they'll just take it away yeah, that's true yeah it might it might end in a terrible way if you own land mm -hmm. unfortunately but uh yeah uh, i think you hit on all the the points there um uh, this also touches the surveillance or sewer surveillance topic because part of the system systematic land use will likely involve how waste is managed and that's a big part of yeah pollution and all that right oh there's value there gans there's business value to be <laughs> had it's business I value mean, all of our i mean data plastics. data is value data is yeah. currency yep. if you like you got to create data on as much as you can because it's worth something so yeah. it's about time we started making some value out of our waste gonzo mm, yeah you know that that would be I think Bill Gates is on to something. <laughs> if only we could figure out a way to monetize our waste. Mm. We could really, that, I mean, talk about value for value model. Oh, yeah. Value for All right. value. We take no money from corporations, commies, or cartels. Ooh, that's right, folks. Value for value. Thanks for sticking with us and uh, listening, watching the show, participating in the community, and uh, and producing the show with your time, your talent, or your treasure. The V4V drought continues uh, a bit here, but I wanted to thank a couple people for producing today's show, uh, which you know is probably it's probably for the best. We'll just keep it short here. <laughs> okay. uh, we did. from heaven felicia d thank you uh, but we did have another another wonderful executive producer oh. come in uh bring in some value and not a second too late too so i'd like everybody to stand up giving a rou rousing round of applause for executive producer now on a streak a three episode executive producer streak executive producer dustin h dustin h executive streak. Executive streak. he's heating up that's yeah, awesome. thank you so much, Dustin. And as we know, he shared a little bit of his story with us, you know, that uh, he's been uh, getting value from the show for a long time here and is finally in a place to put some value back in. And he's doing it. And just in the nick of time, too, Dustin H., thank you very much. Uh, he comes in with 101.33. Aha. Mm -hmm. And he has a note here. It says, for helping me be ahead of the curve for so many years. No corporate, cartel, or commie money. I respect that. Enjoy the weekend, all. Uh, I'll be working double time and thinking up night names. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're probably getting really close, Dustin H. Thank you for that. Can't wait to uh, introduce Dustin H. into the Canary Cry Roundtable of Knights and Dames. If you haven't heard, it's our elite squadron of, uh, of aristocracy here on the show. <laughs> People who have supported the show in the amount of 1000 
$10,000 or more, whether that's all at once or over many years, uh, get a, a place of honor at the round table. So keep an ear out for that in future episodes for Dustin H. Thank you, uh, Dustin which, H. Where'd you find yeah. that? Bankroll, out the bankroll, which is uh, outrageously important uh, today because we have zero producers who came in above seven dollars and seventy seven cents. That is officially it officially hit rock bottom. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, officially hit rock bottom on the uh, producer segment here. Now we did have our streakers did come in under the seven 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 mark, so we are going to thank them okay. uh, for their faithfulness. Starting with Sir Casey the Shield Knight, three hundred nineteen episodes in a row. Thank you, Sir Casey. Veronica D, two hundred eighty one in a row. Veronica D. Sir Scott Knight of Truth, three hundred eight in a row. Thank you, Sir Scott. Dame Gale, Canary Whisper, and Lady of X's and O's, two eighty one. Thank you, Dame Gale. Uh, Sir Morv, Knight of the Burning Chariots, 250 in a row. Sir Morv. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a producer, Joseph C., come in and join the Patreon. Joseph C., thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, this does make me wonder. Mm -hmm. I think we have the capability to create a payment plan that would be per episode, like it charges every two days or something uh, for episode. I wonder if that would be the more sort of palatable way to produce the show people just want to come in for a buck or something you know we get enough we get enough people coming in for a buck a show that could make up for uh the lack of individual uh producerships for the episode i don't know maybe something there send us an email can you cry radio at gmail.com uh but with your, your uh, financially, it's not the only way to produce the show. We have creative producers who come in, they bring their talent to the show, and we adore them for that. Uh, who do we got coming in, guys? We're going to go straight to the art. One art, please. <laughs> All right. Well, the first one, obviously, from our longtime artist, Sir Dove Knight of Rospeltia. Here's a note that says Peace for today's artwork I made another thumbnail duo illustration Hope you guys like it Keep doing what you do And I'll keep praying for you and Dove love P.S. It. Hold on P.S. P.S. Mm -hmm, love it The Gates Water brand Is from episodes uh, 361's Sam's Club artwork With Sam uh, Altman Asking customers To look into the orb I remember that. That's very helpful. Thank you, Sir Dove. And uh, this is a great piece of art. The background is uh, inside of a sauna. Oh, yeah. Great, great looking sauna, lot, by the way. A lot of intelligence Admirable. folk meet in saunas. Uh-huh. A lot of the world's plans go are hatched up in saunas. Uh, but uh, in the foreground here, we have Dove, who has illustrated a couple of ice agents here. On the <laughs> left, we've got... Uh, Basil, the giant googly-eyed canary man wearing an ice vest. It's a vest, says ice on it. You got a nice <laughs> dual use, dual purpose, uh, uh, what, uh, allegory ice vest there. I cannot find the ice vest, Gons. It's really oh, no. actually you scaring me. I am, I am just soaked all the way through right now. The summertime heat in the office is out of control. I have no idea. I remember the ice vest. Uh, was in the freezer for a very long time and was just taking up space. So I took it out, and I don't know where I put it. So uh, Lord Willen in the creek don't rise. That ice vest will uh, show up. On the right-hand side of this beautiful piece of art, we've got Gans, and he looks very proud of his bag of ice. And it's not just any ice. It is Gates Water Ice, recycled from my source. <laughs> ice. Picture of Bill Gates giving a thumbs up there. Yes, we all know where his water comes from. Uh, Gans, you've got, uh, let's see, what do we got on your hat here? We've got a 666 hand signal winking yep. at us from your hat there. Yeah. Is that part of your, uh, I mean, there have been plenty of videos of us over the years of people uh, slowing down, pausing frames, catching us in the act of sending secret Illuminati hand signals. Is that what that's related to, or is there another joke I'm yeah, missing? Maybe, yeah, I don't know. The uh, prayer hands little logo there on my hat. Uh, I uh -huh. guess more got transitioned because you're. Uh -huh. Well, we are in the sauna, 
So that's we should true. be making the, the global domination plans. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sir Dove. This is excelente. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we also got something from Marty K. Knight of the Wrong Timeline. And I, uh, I think he's responding to something we said. Is that what's yes, going he, on here? He's, yeah, he corrected me on the last episode. I mentioned that uh, Denmark was experiencing some uh, France-style uh, civil unrest. And he corrected me and said it's Belgium. That's having the France style civic unrest. And to prove it, he sent us a boots on the ground video of uh, Denmark. Copenhagen, the, Denmark. Yes, Copenhagen, great city, uh, experiencing a lack of civil unrest here. Uh, and if you play the video, I don't know if he has any audio on it. But uh, it does show a beautiful sunny day in Denmark with completely empty streets. No murders, no maimings, no police tanks, uh, and uh, no overthrowing of the government. So I stand corrected. Not Denmark, Belgium. Yeah, it seems so peaceful. There's like nothing yeah. happening. That's generally Denmark. Generally, Denmark is quite peaceful. Mm. But that's that's why you got to watch out. It's always the peaceful ones that uh, come out of nowhere. Thank you very much, Thank Sir, you, Marty K, Sir Marty K. Out of the wrong K. timeline. All right, we have a couple microfictions. Microfiction. Time. Microfiction. This first one is from Ronksmeyer. The duo breathe a sigh of relief as they reach the cracked lanes lined with the lilies of the value, the walls covered in satirical graffiti like the globe huffing a can of hairspray and a scrawling script saying, the sun is making the frog straight. <laughs> oh, I like that line. Yeah. G you know, there are moments of genius on this show, Guns. The sun with a capital S, by the way. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much, Runk Smash. Thank Great you, to hear from you again. Appreciate uh, it. Runk Smash is working very hard. Got some life change. We're praying for you still, Runk Smash. Merk Smash. And uh, yeah, you're doing a great job. Don't don't panic if uh, we got to go a couple episodes without uh, microfictions. Yep, no worries, buddy. All right, Stefan S. The introduction of self-healing skin on the Kangonda Robo Rhinos led to the unintended consequence of parasitic bugs. The high school robotic team's cooperation. Second challenge, an AI-controlled robo-bird to hunt and eradicate these insects. A bit of a throwback. That was a real callback a to callback, the cooperation, yeah. robotic cooperations. Yeah. Uh, yes, coming from a Freethink article, uh, headline, Farmers Can Fight Invasive Insects with AI and a Robotic Arm. Thank you to everybody who sent me uh, the video of the farm laser bug zapper machine that was making the rounds. Uh, it was a good, it's good to keep up on those things. The, the, the laser bug zapping industry has really come a long way since, you know, just setting up a, a bug zapper light or something. This thing is called Tartan Pest, like Tartarus. That sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much, Stefan S. Appreciate it. And that yep. does it for all of our producers who came in with their talent. Appreciate you. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to do Antarctica? Uh, sure. Sure. Let's do it. I was going to mention that if you want to send art in, you can go to canarycry.art and oh, yeah. do that uh, and submit your art. Or you can go to canarycry.report and submit any links. Uh, that you might have to stories that we might consider for the show. So, yeah. yeah. And you know what? We, we haven't mentioned Canary cry meetups in quite some time. That's true. Go we to, should probably do go that to too. Canary cry meetups, uh, see if there's a meetup going on near you. Uh, and if there's not, you just put one on yourself. It's a great way to meet Canarians. No matter where you are in the world, there's almost certainly uh, Canarians within the uh, driving distance of you. Uh, let's see here. We've got, the next one right now 
is coming in September. And that's the North Carolina, or sorry, Eastern North Carolina meetup September 2nd. So there's some time that we got some time for people to put on some meetups here. Uh, I know we're getting into late summer, but uh, what a better time to connect with people who know what's going on. Yep, 100%. And there seems to be more people knowing what's going on than there used to be. So, and mm-hmm. not everyone listens to the show. So maybe it's something where they can find us and it'll be a. Uh, we we got to start cross promoting with other shows, is what we need to do. We got to get, uh, got to start building a federation. We, Got to come out of our shell and talk to other people. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll consider that. Maybe we'll do it in Antarctica. So a new discovery. Antarctica. 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 Antarctica.
uh, you know, she couldn't think of anything other than what her husband might be up to. And yes, 10 days for 10 days. No they internet. were out, out of communication. They could not speak to one another. Uh, party boy husband stayed on land to probably you guessed it party. Uh, while she went on an amazing spiritual journey to Antarctica and she saw penguins jumping out of the water like uh, dolphins. She saw an iceberg. She writes about it so poetically. It was life changing. It was just the sort of life changing trip that all <laughs> rich white liberal women seek, <laughs> bring some excitement back into their life. It was exactly the promised land that Antarctica well, can, has been built into. Can I can I read part of this because the way she sure. describes it, uh, it creates imagery of something uh, that we uh, have as a tradition and a ritual in Christianity. Sure. A shiver of excitement ran through me. Okay, so she's talking about stormy nights and she she's distraught and she's not you know whatever until she saw an iceberg. The first time she saw an iceberg that changed her whole you know vibe. A uh, shiver of excitement ran through me. Here I was on a ship heading to the very bottom of the world. From that moment, I saw something magical every hour. Penguins leaping out of the water like dolphins. Glaciers bigger than buildings. Hundreds of whales surrounding the boat. I even took a dip in the freezing water and felt Ooh. any remnants of shame and guilt wash away. Ah, yes. She was baptized in Antarctica, Basil. It was a it was a spiritual baptism well, in the a icy baptism, waters not, maybe of not a biblical one, but yeah, yeah, a spirit, a, a baptism of sorts, a spiritual baptism. It opened my eyes to the wonders that exist in the world, and I realized this was the kind of experience I wanted to seek. So she yes. had her awakening moment as she entered the cold waters of Antarctica, uh, as an epiphany and a, a one eighty, a moment of uh, I don't know breakthrough yes. from her distraught marriage there's some details about her marriage about how they just had never taught for 10 years they were together they never talked about what they wanted their future to look like which is probably a good thing to weird. fit in the schedule at some <laughs> point during the 10 years just a bit of advice for anybody uh, out yeah. there within the first 10 years you should have some sort of idea about what your future looks like together uh, but it was this trip to antarctica that showed her that her marriage was a sham Basically, this yeah. was a it, it's filled with this sort of feminist freedom from mm -hmm. the, uh, the oppressive from the, <laughs> yeah, traditions of marriage. They, well, they do a great job of sort of avoiding the super. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's the word? I don't know. Stereotypical feminist ideas. But it was this sort of subtle um movements in the in the feminist uh, realm i wouldn't even say like in the activist but the idea being that her marriage was much less important and much less well thought out than she had expected and instead it was this pilgrimage and this baptism to australia that set her free she really talks about it as being set free from sort of the uh the one track uh, experience that her her life had taken and uh, her marriage was just sort of on autopilot her indeed her whole relationship was on autopilot but it was this breaking free and going on an adventure herself to antarctica to get baptized with the penguins uh that <laughs> changed her life and she wrote a ba book baptized and she... with the nephilim well that, that was going to be my point and why are we yeah. even hearing about her what what is you know why is she being featured on the telegraph my new book, Midnight, is a thriller yes. set on a ship bound for Antarctica. It opens up with a murder, so it certainly isn't directly based on my experiences, but the trip heavily influenced my writing. I'm sure it's a metaphorical murder of her ex-husband, but you know we're not going to get into the details <laughs> yeah, here. Probably, probably. But uh, yeah, it's it's you know it's 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 all the things that you'd want, and it's nicely packaged. It's definitely like a native story here native ad type and, of story yeah for yeah. her book and it, which is typical and the emotional narrative of antarctica fitting directly into the new world order 2.0 idea that antarctica is uh, almost like a control panel uh a control panel that can be used 
to uh, affect almost any narrative on Earth. Part of our the fun we get to have is finding all these Antarctic's, Antarctica stories that are analogs for other cultural conversations. You know, once a, a cultural conversation uh, reaches a certain point, a certain saturation uh, within the mainstream me media, boom, a story directly related, and it could be LGBTQ, it could be the trans uh, issue, it could be, uh, uh, of course, environmental issues, geopolitical issues. There's the Ukrainians in Antarctica. It doesn't matter what it is. At some point, uh, a narrative hits a saturation point in the mainstream uh, media where the next step is they bring it to Antarctica. And it's sort of like a seal being put on the narrative to, uh, yeah, to there's, place it. There's place land. It, there's like a, yeah. a geography to it. Yeah, yeah, right. To, to stamp Antarctica and that narrative uh, marking one another as official uh messages if you want to fit in with the progressive sort of ideals of the future we're making together that sort of thing uh and i thought this was a very interesting one you know especially after that little wobble we saw with the the atlantic boom immediately after is antarctica means freedom antarctica means adventure Adva Ad antarctica not just adventure for the trip but a whole life of adventure the story was this tale about her disconnecting from her husband and then living an entire life of adventure, living her dreams of becoming an author and traveling the world and running the Sahara, all because uh, she disconnected from her husband who didn't want to have adventure. Uh, so it is a very powerful story uh, that uh, that this person put together here. Uh, I'm sure most of it, uh, if not all of it, is true. Uh, but it sends a very powerful signal that, uh, to, especially to the sort of liberal women of the world, uh, that living your dream life is at your fingertips. Just book a ticket to Antarctica and Therefore, as we know, become an ambassador to Antarctica, which means uh, spreading the values connected to Antarctica around the world. So now you've got this uh, woman living her dreams as an example of how Antarctica, the great white desert, can change your life for the better, Gons. It makes, it makes me want to go even more. I want to be free like Amy. I want to be free like Amy, Gons, living a life of adventure. Mm. Yeah, sounds like something that all liberal women should do. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what the targeting, you know, they, they, they have their sort of main audience, which is probably sort of like gold digging ladies who <laughs> can take a, a divorce, can give them a lot of money and the freedom to adventure. And that's the kind of money they want in Antarctica. They don't want just your normal tourists. You want uh, people sure. that have transformative, transformative, experiences well that's what it is i mean i i can't speak to whether she got any money out of the divorce or not but it was uh, well, sure. it's the same idea of the transformative events concept the carl tightgrip you know antarctica itself no longer uh is culture bound by transformative events once a year temporally like burning man or whatever but it is a place it's a physical place that you can go to be transformed every time and you don't have to wait you can go now mm -hmm. all you got to do is leave your husband on the shores of ushuaia <laughs> with a, with another woman <laughs> and the ritual <laughs> shall be complete exactly Get I baptized what if they the come back water. and some ladies like i didn't have my experience my, i didn't have any change of experience and they're like well did you leave your husband with a woman on shore i'm like no huh. Well, there, oh, well, that's a very that. important that's, part of it. <laughs> you got to marry somebody first. There's a then, there's a whole group of women ritual. who just hang out in Ushuaia waiting for <laughs> some white lady to leave her <laughs> husband on shore and show them a, a good whole, time. It's a booming business down there on the shores of Ushuaia. All yeah, right. Exactly. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, <laughs> folks. Thanks for listening to this episode of Canary Cry News Talk. Thank you very much to the Clippies, our producers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. 
That's right. They We got the Canary Cry Clips channel on YouTube and Odyssey, and we got these clippies. They are uh, standing by ready to, to start the revolution. Go go follow the Canary Cry Clips channel on YouTube and Odyssey. Uh, and thank you uh, very much to the Time Stampers. Time stamp. It's hard work. Time stamp. That's right. The time stampers. Well, you guessed it. They stamped the time uh, when regards to the uh, the timeline of the show. It goes into so much of our back end uh, <laughs> back end processes. It's very important. Thank you very much. And I think for episode uh, 642, it was Jade Bouncerson doing yes. the time stamps. Yes. yes. Thank you very much, uh, Jade. Thank you, Jade. Uh, thank you to Jam for the links. Thank you for everybody who sent in links to Canary dot report is there anything anybody special we want to thank in regards to that yeah oh you know what yeah while you find that i did want to give a special shout out to a twitter user who uh who is doing a great job of spreading the good word of canary cry news talk on the tweeters and that's k-man k-man thank you at k-man seven 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 underscore uh, go follow this Canarian if anybody's there. Uh, yeah, it uh, was tagging me in a bunch of conversations he's having with people, leading people to the show, sharing episodes of the show, having, you know, really uh, connecting with people. There's multiple people who said, oh, I'm checking it out now because you came in. Thank you very much, came in. So, came in, if you're listening out there, good job, buddy. And if anybody out there uh, sees or knows came in on the internet or otherwise, tell him thank you personally. We need a, we need a man. We need a man for every, or, or woman. For every letter of the alphabet, we need an A man, yeah, woman. Uh, that's right. It. We need a B man. Where's the L man? Um, L man, yeah. Okay. Where's the G man? Thank you to the Sentinel for sending in an uh, article yes. to CanaryCry.report. Thank Thanks to Clank for the reminder. And other than that, folks, you share the show. Share the show with your friends, with your family, with your penguins, with your long lost lovers that you left on the shores of Ushuaia as you went and found your life of adventure. There's lots of ways to share the show. Uh, you don't have to do it the normal way, you know, uh, blasting it out of your car window, breaking into uh, the control room at the mall and playing it over the loudspeakers, uh, hacking into a government database and uploading the podcast uh, to the DMV, uh, so the DMV gets to listen to it. There's lots of ways to do it, uh, mm. but mostly a great way to do it is just uh, gather the podcast, you know, the podcast you've been listening to for 10 years, but you really, you really, you know, really committed to this podcast recently. It's not us. It's the other podcast. And uh, you go on a big, long trip for three, four, five months down in South America, hoping to uh, grow closer with that podcast. But it turns out that podcast is just a party podcast. That podcast just wants to go out, make friends, a little bit more of an extrovert. And it just turns out that you and that podcast were not really suited for one another. But what is this? A podcast? Podcast, who promises adventure in Antarctica, the only podcast possibly in the world uh, to offer you at the end of the show adventure to the great white desert and how that will change your life uh, and give you the life that you always wanted. So leave that old podcast, leave that old podcast on the shores of Ushuaia <laughs> to go romp around with some other podcast listener no you're getting on the boat with canary cry news talk and it'll uh give you the life you always wanted that's one way to share the show you don't have to share it that way just whatever you want if you need any more instructions here's what you do we call it rattling cages and you just walk right up to him you grab him by the cage and then you shake it the end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted i want to shake things up stir up some controversy rattle a few cages <laughs> You'll never silence me. I'm the last angry man, a crusader for the little guy. Leave the bird alone. Never. Rattle a few cages. Rattle a few cages. The human race will have every opportunity to improve. And if they don't? Ask Noah. That's right. Just ask Noah. Gons, any last words? Have a great weekend. Stay watchful. Don't eat leftover hot dogs. 
Every day is 4th of July when you're a real patriot. Just don't blow off your fingers. I'm sure there's some leftover fireworks in the closet. Just save them for next time. Don't start any fires. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Canary Cry News Talk. Make sure to tune in on Monday. But until then, think outside the cage. Goodbye. I love the great reset. <laughs> Armageddon's on the way. This is not about freedom or personal choice. Violence! you down and make you pay in the cosmos children in the space lane i'm an adult in a spaceship man. supersonic space lane screamed to life and the vehicle swooped up upward on board the passengers experienced a three g's of force from the burst of extreme acceleration and watched the blue sky fade into the space. Space. in the back have been clear to unstrap oh yeah in the back have been clear to unstrap yes do it in richard do it in jeff do it for humanity. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship. He can accomplish it. You can do Big windows, cool. Rocket ship, cool. Space plane, cool. Nukes, cool. Blowing stuff up, cool. Space plane, astronaut, rocket ship. Maybe this anchor, man. We have Bezos, he's a human. Just look at him. Go to the bathroom and back. Toilets! He can go to the bathroom in the cosmos. Toilets! He changed everything. Why does yeah. space children yeah. in the cosmos go to space? With your best friend or brother. Why yeah. in the cosmos children yeah. in the space lane? We are headed to space. Shall shine.
Here, bye. Canary, cry, Dr. Poe.